Singapore has a reputation for being crazy expensive. However, during our time in the city, we learned there's a lot of affordable things you could do if you're visiting Singapore on a tight budget, including hotel stays, delicious food, and even some shopping at its famous malls. Or right here at the Jewel at Changi Airport, Singapore has a ton of malls and the Jewel is one of its nicest and newest. There's a ton of high-end stores, of course, to do some window shopping at, but you could also go into some of the more regular stores, Nike, your Zara's of the world, and do some shopping here in Singapore as well. We're gonna go around the Jewel here and see if we could keep things affordable or even see what we could see for free, including the centerpiece of this whole beautiful shopping mall. This is amazing. Wow. I can see a rainbow here. See that? Yeah, just a little bit. Just like in Dubai here in Singapore, they have a gold machine. Unfortunately though, it's temporarily out of order so we can't get any gold from it. This is an incredible place to come in between your flight if you're a transit passenger because there's so much to do here. Even when you're visiting Singapore for a short time period, you should come here just like we did because this is one of the best ways to be on a budget. Come here, you can see the fountain show. It's so colorful, so beautiful. You're gonna have an amazing day here while doing a little bit window shopping and also enjoying this beautiful scenery. It's so relaxing and a great place to unwind in between your transit. There are of course some attractions that you would like to pay and experience it. It ranges around five to eight Singapore dollars and one of them is actually this glass bridge. It's for about like seven to eight dollars to walk on it and it's pure glass. I would recommend it uh, if you have any fear of heights but it's probably a cool to experience for those who are not. After finishing up window shopping or actual shopping at the malls, don't sit and eat at the food courts there. Trust us, get outside of the malls and go to the hawker centers in Singapore. There's dozens of them all around the city and they have delicious Michelin rated food all for under 10 Singaporean dollars. We're here at one in Chinatown. Of course, there's a famous one right on Newton Road near the Orchard Road malls, but there's dozens around the city. You can't go wrong with a lot of them. I was scared I was gonna make a mess. <laughs> but for like a dollar forty Singaporean, this is it's spot right after a nice big lunch. And affordable, delicious food is not just limited to Chinatown Hawker Centers. Singapore has an incredible little India to explore as well. It's the whole meal, three lassi, an entire biryani, two samosas in total. I would say maybe 15 Singaporean dollars. This is so delicious and so fulfilling. Once you're done eating, there's a lot to do outside as well to keep things affordable, like visiting Singapore's famous parks. So Singapore is a lot more green than we thought it was gonna wind up being. You just think of Singapore as a big giant city, but there's parks, there's a ton of green areas to actually enjoy nature in. And we came to Fort Canning Park here, smack dab in the middle of the city. It actually was the place that the 14th century Singapore Palace was erected. Now, of course, today it's a place that people come and enjoy a picnic or two. So we're gonna go and enjoy some of this green area because guess what, it's free. And that's pretty damn affordable for here in Singapore. We're at the most Instagrammable place that, you know, you see a lot of pictures here. And it's very crowded with, you know, ladies taking pictures of each other. But it's kind of like Instagram versus reality situation where it's just a regular, ordinary place. But that's okay. It's still very nice to see it. And the best way about these parks is it's completely free to visit. And also, this is one of the things that you want to do in the most affordable way. You saw the ladies still taking pictures? Yeah, it's still happening. Even getting around Singapore can be surprisingly affordable. What shocked us is even cabs through Grab are pretty affordable. To go from the airport to the city center was just under 30 Singaporean dollars. And to get from neighborhood to neighborhood here in Singapore is usually under 10 Singaporean dollars through Grab. But even better, if you're just going inside one neighborhood, you could walk around. A lot of stuff is centrally located. If you are going from place to place, the ultimate cheap way to keep it affordable here in Singapore is by using the MRT, the Metro line, and it's actually 
actually a distance-based system, sort of like we saw in Sydney, Australia before. Rides can start as cheap as 45 cents Singaporean if you're going under three kilometers. Of course, that could wind up taking about 30 minutes depending upon where you wanna go versus just hopping in a cab and if there's no traffic, you could be there in 10. So balance it out depending upon your budget and there's a ton of ways to get around Singapore and it's not so expensive. Even staying over in Singapore could be affordable as well, with capsule hotels and others being under 100 US dollars per night. Welcome to Yotel, a capsule hotel for those who are on their 30th, just like us. And this is a very small but a very efficient room in every way. Cost efficient and also efficiently used room. Anything we see here on the wall, we literally try to touch and play around to see what it is for. For example, these are hangers that I just found out in hung my denim jacket already and if you come here there is this whole board where you open it and there's an iron table and then you do the same thing right here open it and we have an umbrella touching this place i honestly don't know what's gonna come up oh there you go a desk there are outlets that you can use and i believe they are international there's also a chair somewhere hidden around here we'll find that we're gonna find a chair <laughs> we're gonna find a chair and we have a place for our luggage and I have to probably put mine down here. They even give us slippers. That's so cool. Just coming over here. Let's see what we have here. We have coffee mugs. We have an iron. We have a hair dryer. And we have like a care pack, toothpaste, toothbrushes, all this stuff, which is very cool. The most interesting part of the room, in my opinion, is the bathroom because it's literally overlooking outside. Thankfully, they left a curtain here. All right, coming out of the bathroom we have our lovely bed here there's so many pillows for such tight space i don't know why and also my worry is half of my body is out how are we going to sleep here soon <laughs> i think it's a smart bed i saw a button actually on your side over there where oh. you could lower the bed if you want to and ah. now you go much further back and actually fit into the bed take yes. your shoes off though before of course and we have a kettle here for making coffee in the morning. And here's a chair. So basically, we're gonna pull that chair over there to the table and work there, which is pretty cool. We'll probably need to pull this desk a bit up again. Oh so. yeah, that's true. You can't have the table and the bed open at the same time, unfortunately, because it's a tiny space. And here we have a fridge. A safe is here as well. Mm -hmm. So this is a place that you would like to, of course, stay for a couple days or so. But more than that, can be a little bit too tight for two people. This is a perfect place to make it affordable, fun, and unique at the same time. We also wanted to see if we could keep Singapore's most famous attractions as affordable as possible. We have made it to Marina Bay Sands in the gardens by the Bay Area. We're gonna go and check out the famous Marina Bay Sands casino and hotel first. And just like Atlantis in Dubai, we're gonna see what's inside that we could spend as little as possible. And the nightly rates here, I think, start around like 500 Singaporean dollars a night. So yeah, it's, it's not cheap at all, but like, you know, it's one of those bucket list things to do while you're here in Singapore. But you know, if you aren't staying here, you're able to come in as well, go to the casino, go to the shop. So there is definitely other things to do besides just stay here for the night. So we're going to go see exactly what we could do, maybe to keep some costs down, just like we did in Atlantis in Dubai. Steve, do you want to take a romantic ride with me in the mall? This area very much reminds me of the World Trade Center because there's also an underground pass just to the water. It's very similar and I like it. And also we checked it out, that gondola ride right through the mall. It's actually 12 Singaporean dollars per person. Not as bad as we were expecting, but you know, you gotta pay for it, of course. The good thing about Marina Bay Sands though is it's right next to one of Singapore's most famous, or if not its most famous attraction. And if you can't tell what it is from directly behind my shoulder at this point, we'll get a little bit closer, to, but it is free to get into most of it. So that is a good thing to keep prices and things down here in Singapore. And we are going to head over there now to finish off our night. So you know there's a bunch of other things to see and do here in Gardens by the Bay. There's the two domes that actually cost also a little extra to get into, I believe between five and eight Singaporean dollars. So just keep that in mind, but you could easily spend a few hours here and there's still so much to see. We just, we ran out of time. So we're gonna head straight to the Skywalk right now and we will show you the view from up there. We can't wait and I'm a little bit nervous. 
So definitely recommend coming here on a weekday. It's a lot less crowded than it would be on a weekend. And it is eight Singaporean dollars to go up and do the skywalk. And I'm a little bit nervous. It looks a little scary from up there. It gets even scarier. The more you walk down, I can't believe these are the only things that are holding us. It's Wow, yeah, if, you ha if you're afraid of heights like Steve, this may not be your favorite thing to do. And it's shaking Even, a little bit. It is shaking because it's too windy and yeah, it's... <sighs> I'm trying to look stronger so he won't be afraid. <laughs> this is not fun. incredible watching all this light show apparently they have it every night and I believe it took for about 15 minutes yeah roughly 15 minutes but the scenery was amazing they say it's better from downstairs but I think they just don't want to overcrowd the bridge so we finally made it to the end of our time here in Singapore and we really hope that you now know that you could absolutely do the city if you are on more of a budget, whether it's hotels or food or just activities that you could do around here. There's a bunch of free things to do as well as things that you could do on the cheap, like just going up to the sky deck was eight Singaporean dollars and you get an amazing view of the Marina Bay Sands and the entire marina area here in Singapore. So don't be afraid to come here if you're on a budget, spend a few days and really take in this city we definitely enjoyed doing so. So stay tuned, subscribe, and we will see you next time off to our next country. Okay, we have finally made it to Bangkok, Thailand, and Gokchi and I have decided, of course, what's the best way for us to travel around the city? Eat its delicious food in all its different neighborhoods. There's just so much to do, and of course, when you're getting tired of shopping, you can get a street food and eat some food. Easy peasy. Look at this prawn. Whoa!